p.m. and I call this meeting to order. Please stand and we'll recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Winona City Council. Uh, tonight, I've got a couple proclamations to read, and I will start with this one first. City of Winona, Minnesota Proclamation. Whereas the American Association University Women, Winona, celebrating their 100th anniversary, promotes equity for all women and girls, lifelong in education and societal change. And whereas AAUW provides forums for community, regional, national, and global issues. And whereas by virtue of participation in activities at local, state, national, and international levels provide opportunities for leadership, mentoring, and personal growth. And whereas AAUW established a scholarship which provides funding for non-traditional women student, women student in any of the colleges and universities in Winona. And whereas AAUW established a national foundation which provides postgraduate scholarships for women in all fields. And whereas the Winona branch contributes to the National Legal Advocacy Fund which provides assistance to women involved in harassment or discrimination lawsuits in colleges and universities. And whereas the AAUW continues to fulfill its mission through study groups, programs, and interest areas open to all women having a four-year bachelorette degree from an accredited college or university. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Scott Sherman, hereby proclaim April 22nd, 2023, as American Association of University Women Day in the city of Winona, Minnesota. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Winona to be affixed the 17th day of April, 2023. We've got another proclamation here. City of Winona, Minnesota proclamation. Whereas Alzheimer's disease and other dementias are growing a growing concern in Minnesota, our nation and the world, and whereas over 6.7 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's and other dementias, and whereas nearly 13 million will have the disease in 2050, and whereas the cost of caring for those with Alzheimer's and other dementias is estimated to total 345 billion in 2023, and whereas that cost is estimated to increase to just under 1 trillion by 2050, and whereas 163,000 Minnesotans care for family members with Alzheimer's and other dementias. And whereas these caregivers provide 225 million hours of unpaid care valued at 5.3 billion yearly. And whereas Act on Alzheimer's is a Minnesota initiative to prepare communities to support individuals living with dementia and their care partners. And whereas the Winona Dementia Friendly Community Action Team is hosting its fourth annual Winona Dementia Friendly Community Week on April 17th through the 21st, 2023. And we'll be offering a full week's agenda of education, resources, and programs to help people living with memory loss, their care partners, and our community to become knowledgeable about the dementia and reduce the stigma associated with a dementia diagnosis. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Scott Sherman, hereby proclaim April 17th through the 21st of 2023 as Winona Dementia Friendly Community Week in the city of Winona, and I urge all our citizens to avail themselves of the education and awareness resources offered and to participate in working towards making Winona a more de dementia-friendly city. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Winona to be affixed the 17th day of April, 2023. This evening, I've also got a update on the Madeline Kingsbury case that was released today by Winona Police Department. We are continuing to investigate the disappearance of M Madeline Maddie Kingsbury. She was last seen on March 31. We remain extremely concerned for her safety. 
Law enforcement and first responder teams continue to conduct daily targeted searches for Maddie. Based on information generated by the investigation and on tips from the public. In the last week, there have been foot, aerial, and water searches. We are using all available resources in the search, including sonar, submersibles, and dog teams. We want to thank the many people who have come from near and far to assist us in searching for Maddie. We continue to receive dozens of tips each day and appreciate everyone who has taken the time to share information with us. If you have information that you think could be valuable, please call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS or TIPS or online at crimestoppersmn.org. We are again asking property owners in Winona, Fillmore, and Houston counties, please walk your land and check your outbuildings. Look for anything unusual or out of place. Even if you have already done this, please do it again. The changing weather conditions might reveal new signs that weren't there before. If you find anything concerning, call your local law enforcement agency. This investigation is active and ongoing. We are not prepared to identify a suspect or person of interest at this time. We are continuing to follow several paths of inquiry as we work to determine what happened to Maddie and if warranted, hold accountable the person or persons responsible for her disappearance. Our thoughts remain with Maddie's friends and family during this difficult time. We are committed to doing everything possible to find her and we remain confident we will bring her home. Lastly, I have, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. I apologize everybody, but today is my wife's birthday mm -hmm. and I'm here instead of at birthday dinner. So I owe her an apology when I get home, but uh, I do wanna wish her a happy birthday. With that, I will ask City Manager Chad Ubel for his comments. Uh, Mayor and Council, I've asked uh, Public Works Director Brian DeFrang uh, to give an update on the city's efforts regarding uh, flood protection. And so I've just called up Brian to give us an overview of what the city is doing and actions the city is taking uh, regarding the flooding. Mayor and Council, uh, the river right now is about at 15 feet and is expected to peak out around Saturday at 18 feet. So about three feet higher than it is right now. At 16 feet, we do 24 hour, seven day a week until it goes down under 16 again. We do levee watch the whole way. We check the pumps. Uh, obviously we're checking behind the levee for any boils, anything like that. If you do see a boil, it's not concerning unless there's soil with it. So we're highly trained in what to look for, everything else like that. And obviously they're walking the top of the levee to see if there's any weaknesses whatsoever in it. Like I say, it's, it's around the clock. Um, obviously we know it snowed last night. So some of the guys, it wasn't, it wasn't the whole staff or anything. We continued levee watch because we've been doing it since 10 feet that there's portions of it that we watch at 12 feet and 10 feet. We turn the pumps on at 10. So we got to check the, the pumping stations when it gets to 10 feet. And then when it's 12 feet, there's an area by high forest, which is a little more sensitive. So we walk that, but they were able to plow last night. Um, as you may have seen, the plowing was not great. That wasn't because of lack of staff or anything like that. It was basically because the roads this time of year get soft and we'd have hundreds of thousands of dollars of damage if we did curb to curb, especially on the seal coat streets like that. So it was intentional to plow that amount. But getting back to the levy, like I said, it's gonna get to 18 approximately on Saturday and hopefully not like 2019 or 20, 2001, it continues that downward slope. And then once it gets below 16, we don't have the 24 hour watches. And then once it gets below 10, we don't pump anymore. You know, historically, it takes about two and a half weeks to get back down, but anything could happen. So we're prepared for whatever comes. I guess if you guys have any questions directly, I, I could answer them at this time. See you. Steve. With your manpower being used with with uh, flood watch and, and dike patrol, is this is this going to delay anything else that we were imminently working on, or what does that look like? Some some street work operations like patching and stuff like that will be delayed. Uh, obviously, flood is priority. You know, making sure the town stays dry. Um, 
there have been some people that called with patching and they understood that we were, you know, flood, flood watching. I'm not going to say flood fighting because it's yeah. far from flood fighting um, was priority and they understood. But that that is kind of a public announcement that some things will be delayed a little bit. So it's primarily patching that you're delaying. Primarily patching. Um, we do have some water department crew, some sewer crew, some park maintenance crew that will be doing the 24 hour watch. They're not on that yet, mm -hmm. but come Wednesday is when it's projected to go to 16, then we will pull from other departments. So yeah. there'll be some park maintenance stuff that gets delayed. Water and sewer we're, shouldn't be too much delayed. It would just be more of a skeleton crew. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for Brian? Thanks for the update. Appreciate it. Uh, Mayor and Council, nothing else for this evening. Okay, very good. I will now ask the city clerk to take roll call. Mayor Sherman. Here. Councilman Young. Here. Haima. Here. Christensen. Here. Iden. Here. Wojciechowski. Here. Rapinski. Here. For each public hearing, staff will make a short presentation and then I will ask if anyone from the public wishes to speak to the matter. Each person needs to clearly state your name and address, and you will be given up to three minutes to make your testimony. I will call three times for public comments. Once the hearing is closed, the public may not participate in the discussion by city council. Under the public hearings, item 2.1 is the appeal of the decision of the Board of Adjustment for Whitewater Properties, LLC, Mitchell Walsh. And tonight we have Carlos Espinoza, city planner. Evening, Mayor and Council. I have some brief uh, comments on the status of the appeal uh, procedurally, as well as a brief history of the height variance uh, that has been submitted uh, related to 51 Riverview Drive. And then Chris Sanchez, uh, Chairman of the Board of Adjustment, is available uh, if there are questions for him tonight. So for the variance request, uh, what we are um, seeing in front of council tonight is an appeal to the decision made by the Board of Adjustment on March 15th, denying a height variance request for a 56 foot tall, six inch multifamily residential structure at 51 Riverview Drive. The variance would facilitate construction of a five story building with first floor parking sunk into the ground and then four stories of residential units above it. Um, so 63 total residential units are proposed. The reason the variance has uh, come forward is the height limitation in the zoning district where 51 Riverview Drive is located is 40 foot. And so the variance to go up to 56, six inches uh, essentially allows an additional story of housing in the building uh, more than what would be permitted at the 40 foot height requirement. So essentially what the request is, is to get an additional height or an additional story of housing on the proposed building. 51 Riverview Drive is located at the intersection of where Riverview Drive turns into Huff Street. It's immediately north of Daniels Hardware. Uh, you'll see the max height noted in the center of the screen for that mixed use downtown fringe zoning district where 51 Riverview Drive is located. That max height is 40 feet. Just to the east of there, primarily uh, south and east, the uh, mixed use downtown core area has a height of 75 feet. So that just a couple blocks away, the max height increases to 75 feet. To the west is I-2 and I-1 zoning, industrial zoning that houses buildings that are 15 to 30 feet in general uh, maximum height. On the screen now is a conceptual site plan that was submitted by the applicant. Uh, it shows the building in the upper portion of the parcel outlined in black. Uh, what you see on the screen there is the ground floor level uh, that would have the parking that's inside on the first floor of the building. And then just to the south of that is some additional at grade outdoor parking as well. Some recent zoning history related to this property. The mixed use downtown fringe zoning district was applied in 2017 uh, through our unified development code update. So when we updated our zoning code in 2017, that's when this parcel uh, had the mixed use downtown fringe zoning applied to it. That zoning was applied based on the comprehensive plans 
downtown fringe land use designation, which was meant to facilitate a similar mix of uses at a lower intensity than the downtown core. As a result, the max height of 40 foot was assigned to this district versus the 75 foot permitted in the downtown core. So the main reason for that lower uh, maximum height is to provide a transition in height from the downtown area to adjacent residential neighborhoods, which is different because in this application, you do not have any residential surrounding it. So the primary reason for that 40 foot height requirement was to provide a graduation between residential, downtown fringe and downtown core. Think about a two story house in a residential area just to the south of downtown going to a three to four story potential building in the fringe up to six stories or 75 feet in the core. So you have that gradual increase in height. Variance history for this property and for this request, as I mentioned, following uh, the zoning for the property in 2019, the property uh, was purchased by the applicant in March of 2020. In June of that year, the applicant submitted a variance for a 63 foot tall building. That one was denied uh, by the Board of Adjustment, and so the applicant uh, revised their plans and looked at sinking the first floor into the ground. So they were able to reduce it to 53 feet for the second go around. And that second go around at 53 feet in August was again denied by the Board of Adjustment, except this time it was appealed to Council. And in November of 2020, the Council overrode the Board of Adjustment decision to deny the variance, thus approving the variance uh, for the 53 foot tall building at that point in time. In 2021, there was a one year extension granted uh, for the variance because we have a provision in city code that says you have to put a variance to use within a year. If not, you have to come in for an extension. They came in for the extension and the extension was approved. However, at the end of 2022, November 2022, that uh, extension expired and as a result we notified the applicant that they were essentially going to have to start over and so um, that is the request in front of you tonight. February 2023 the applicant submitted a new application for a 56 foot tall six inch variance uh, and what that does is it accounts for the required 12 foot first floor height requirement that we have in code so for the first floor of our buildings, uh, and really this would be the second story uh, of this building, we require them to be 12 foot tall, uh, clear between the floor and the ceiling. Upper stories is only nine foot. That wasn't factored into the original request, uh, thus the actual, or thus the additional three foot uh, for this request. So it went from 53 to 56 foot, six inches. On March 15th, the Board of Adjustment denied the most recent request uh, for the 56 foot six inches and the Board of Adjustment denial findings are in your packets as Exhibit D. And as I mentioned, the chair of the Board of Adjustment, Chris Sanchez, is here tonight. Uh, should you have any questions regarding those findings? Council options for the appeal decision tonight. Um, there's three. Uh, the first would be to affirm the decision of the Board of Adjustment to, den to deny. The second would be to affirm and amend the decision of the Board of Adjustment. And the third would be to overrule the decision of the Board of Adjustment. In that case, an alternative three, uh, a finding, or I'm sorry, a motion uh, to adopt the findings and conclusions uh, of the Board of Adjustment and adopt the finding, or I'm sorry, to overrule the findings of the Board of Adjustment would be in order, and then adopting the findings contained in Exhibit I or with uh, specific findings um, from the council, that would be in order. So if you would like to overrule uh, the decision of the Board of Adjustment, that would be alternative three. And finally, next steps, uh, if the denial is overruled and the variance is approved, uh, it's important to note that the project is still subject to site plan approval. Uh, so we'll take a look at details such as aesthetics and design standards. We have design standards which would apply to this building. Um, parking, uh, which the applicant has indicated they will meet fire access, pedestrian connections, et cetera. Um, the things that we normally uh, take a look at through the site plan review process. I will note that the Planning Commission um, review of, of this item or review of the site plan uh, in front of the Planning Commission is a possibility due to the visibility of this project. Uh, I would expect that to occur. So that's all that I have for tonight. I'm available for questions either now or at a later time uh, during this agenda item. Very good, thank you. Uh, okay, George. Just one question, Carlos. 
as the property sits right now, it's required for 40 feet, correct? That's correct. So that's what it, you can do 40 feet without any variances or anything. And how many housing units would that be? So right now the app, the application is for 63. Okay. By expanding the footprint of the building, conceptually you could get up to uh, that amount or close to it. Essentially what that would mean is you would expand the footprint of the building and all of the parking would be located on the first floor underneath in the uh, underground parking essentially. So instead of having the parking that's outside, you would expand the build building envelope and provide all the parking underneath. The actual number of units that's permitted in the uh, overall uh, development would likely hinge on the amount of parking spaces that they're able to provide underneath there because we have a requirement of one parking space per unit. So if they can't um, provide that one parking space per unit, they would have to come in for a variance to our uh, another variance to our zoning code. And then we'd readdress the situation at that point in time. But they could get up to um, potentially that that 63 unit if the uh, footprint of the building was expanded. Okay, so what we approved in the past, the 53, um, that's off the table. That's correct. As we're okay, we're back to 40. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, George. That's yeah. an important point. I want to I want to make sure that I, I get this and I understand this. So you're you're saying that if if we could, your opinion is that we could stick with a 40 feet, expand the footprint, and get all or almost all of the 63 units. It would be driven by the amount of parking that's uh, provided in that first floor. Um, I think you could get up to a potentially that 63, um, but what you're doing is essentially increasing the size of the building by about a third. Okay. All right, thank you. And so by doing that, you're pretty much eliminating any kind of green space or anything like that. You're, you're basically, the building would have to go right up to the setbacks um, in order to, to do that. Whereas if we approve, the what the request is and move to 56 you can get those 63 within a smaller footprint and provide some green space as well as um parking that's not under the, the facility is that correct that's correct okay thanks chef aaron did you have something um i just <clears throat> i'd like to remember that in november of 2020 the council um, did overturn the boa and agreed to do it to 53 feet and i understand in order to have that first level at 12 feet um, we would need to go to the 56. Um, I, I'm for, uh, I guess, alternative three. You know, I understand Mr. that there would be subject to site plan approval. Mr. Uh, Mayor, Aaron, hold on. Yes, Chris. Um, before uh, council members start um, expressing opinions, we need to yep. open the hearing, hear all the testimony, okay. and Sorry, then yeah. after that's done and that that's closed, then council can can deliberate. During the hearing process, you can certainly ask questions uh, or clarifications, but we shouldn't talk about uh, deliberating or uh, opinions on various criteria for a variance until following the close uh, of the hearing. Right. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. That's okay. Any other questions of Carlos before I open the public hearing? Okay. Hearing none, I will now open the public hearing. Does anybody from the public wish to speak regarding the appeal of the decision of Board Adjustment, Whitewater Properties, LLC, Mitchell Walsh? Will you state your name and address, please? Uh, Mitch Walsh, 1912 Brownell Street, St. Charles, Minnesota. So it was approved for the 53 and we've really you know, put a substantial amount of costs into plans and getting them ready and engineered and, you know, want to see this move forward with the fourth floor. Um, it's still a substantial transition, you know, in the fringe area, area going up to 75 feet in the core. Um, it, you know, it's about not quite half, but pretty close to it. Um, you know, surrounding it or you got the freighter malt silos that I think they're a hundred something feet and that's behind the project. Um, we do have enough parking. We've considered, you know, maybe doing some Airbnbs to alleviate even more parking concerns. I think the project coexists greatly and supports the comp plan in terms of riverfront revitalization. 
It's also a great tax asset to the city. Um, it would look a lot better with a four-story building if you're driving into downtown, I think, better than a three as well. And if you got to take advantage of some of this riverfront development, you know, you drive from La Crosse to, I think, Lake City's getting another new housing complex overlooking Lake Pepin coming up as well. So do you guys have any questions for me or anything? Uh, we'll wait till the discussion part of it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Mitch. Is anybody else from the public wish to speak regarding this matter? I'll ask one more time. Does anybody from the public wish to speak regarding the appeal of a decision of the Board of Adjustment, Whitewater Properties, LLC, Mitchell Walsh? Hearing none. We can during discussion. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Chris, would you mind? Or Chris, would, uh, can we have the BOA talk during the public hearing or would that be more appropriate during discussion afterwards? Uh, Mayor and Council, it would be better to have anybody that wants to say something publicly be on the hearing record before you close the hearing. And that includes uh, questions for Mr. Walsh as well. Uh, and then okay. after that's done, you could close the hearing and then deliberate. Okay, very good. Chris Sanchez, do you want to speak at all during the public hearing? Okay. Okay, we'll have you come up. We have a few questions. Let's have you state your name and address, please. Chris Sanchez, 121 Wildwood Drive, uh, Chairman of Board of Justice. Thank you. Jeff, you had a question? Yeah, Chris, in reading through things, it, it looked like when you guys did the vote on this that there were two two members of the uh, committee absent. Is that correct? I don't recall. Okay, because it was a 4-2 vote yeah. um, to deny. Yeah. And then I thought I read in there that there was two that were absent. I mean, well, how many there, might, there might have been. There's, I think there, how many are the other? There might have been. I'm sorry. It, it's because, just, I mean, how many I people are on your committee total? I believe seven. Yeah. Okay, so at least one was one yeah. was absent. So okay, that that's helpful. I think Chris was one of them absent. That might be why you don't remember. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. That could be that could be a reason. And is and is um, was there? You know, I, I read through the things. There's there seems to be five questions that are applied to these things. You know, to try to determine you know which where, which way. And I've read through. You know the responses and what have you. Is there anything else there that we're missing or not aware of that um, you know that we should be aware of in this process? Because it sounds like it seems like you folks were consistent. You denied it the first time. You denied and, and denied it the second time. Um, is there anything I'm missing? Well, the, the findings there that you're talking about is five questions that are required by statute that we have to answer. Right. If we answered no to one of them. Where by law we have to deny the whole variance. Okay. And so we've answered that. Well, the board answered no. I'm speaking for the board, of course. Right. Uh, the board answered no to several of them. So we had, it was supposed to be denied according to you know, the rules and regulations of what we have to follow. Um, I think most of the people on the board, you see the comments there, they felt like by, by putting an addition story on there, it would, it would greatly increase uh, um, density there. And in a mixed use area, it's supposed to be medium density. You know, and, and so they really felt that the density would raise so much that it become high density. And in the comp plan, that was a medium density area. So they were confused on how that could be in harmony with the comprehensive plan that's current. Okay. Um, a lot of questions were asked, is the comprehensive plan gonna change to downtown core in order to, to facilitate a building this, like this? And I, I don't believe that they were gonna do that, but talking with Carlos, he you know he, he's, he's has ideas of how that needs to transition in a proper way that it is now, because it, it is unique being a lot of commercial. Um, they're really concerned about the parking. If there's 60 units, um, I believe that how they did the math of the units, there could be three per people in every unit, right? Three people, so that's 100 and, what is that, 120? No, 100 and, I don't do the math. 180. 180, duh. 189. Yeah. So that could be that many people there. And if you have one parking spot per, per uh, Per, per per unit, that's 60 parking for 180 people. So the Board of Justice the, the whole time has been concerned about that. Whether that's true or not, 
I don't know. It hasn't been tested. There hasn't been development in uh, the fringe area to, to, to see what, you know, would really happen. So that being said, that's all they can go by is, you know, where's the parking? We did talk to, to Carlos and Luke about how much off-street parking there is available for people in that area within a, like a block. And there was uh, quite a bit of off-street parking. I mean, uh, probably enough to satisfy a lot of people. But then what happens when the next guy does a development? Or is his park people going to park? Or the next, you know, that whole area is, is eventually going to be redeveloped. So they're concerned about that, too. Is that, is that going to take all the parking for, for all the rest of the people that want to do a development there that should do development? So the main reason, I think, the board, speaking for the board, that, that, that the denial was formed is, was because they really felt that the density was going to be maxed out and it wasn't proper for that area. A four story building, you know, is, is you know, still a, a giant project, you know, five story building. It just it just adds so much more density. And I, I don't know how much I can't speak of that right now. Um, it all depends if he does three bedrooms, two bedrooms. We didn't have a lot of information in front of us either to make a, a decision about what exactly the population of that building is going to be. Um, um, so uh, it just really felt that it wasn't responsible to have that much density in that area, uh, especially with parking, but okay, that's, that, that's why we were, that's why they were consistent. The board was consistent because that they felt the same way through and through, um, but. That's helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks, Chris. Jerome? Yeah, uh, Carlos, uh, could you sort of define what uh, the difference between high and medium density in this context, uh, how does, how does that apply here? We do know the comprehensive plan does not provide a definition of medium density or high density. Um, and so what I will say is the comprehensive plan encourages uh, medium density, however that is defined um, in this area. It does not specifically say that only medium density uh, is encouraged for this area or only allowed in this area. And really that medium density recommendation again goes to that gradual transition between residential areas and the downtown area where you want to go from relatively low density, which would be the residential areas surrounding downtown to medium density in quotations in the fringe area to higher density, a higher relative density in the core area. This specific location here, again, it's not in that situation where you're right next to residential. So. From staff's perspective, we see this uh, particular property as essentially ripe for a variance request. Does anyone else have questions for Chris Sanchez? No, thanks Chris. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Mitchell Wallace? Jeff, Mitch, can you come back up please? Mitch, do you have a, a sense as to, to what the mix of units is going to be? If, if let's just say, for example, everything you know, we we grant what you're asking, and you get the 63 units and the, the floors that you want. Um, what what's the, the do you have a sense as to what the apartment you know bedroom numbers are going to be? Yeah, I don't have it in front of me, but I think it was 12 three bedrooms, 28 one bedrooms, a few studios and stuff. And then a few two bedrooms, kind of a good mix. Okay. Okay. And then do you with with the um, again working on the premise that what you're asking for is going to be granted, and we're having the smaller footprint that's taller. How many parking places can fit underneath? Ooh. You got that PowerPoint. I don't have the exact number for you, but um, essentially they would meet the parking uh, spaces mm. that are required per code. So okay. um, they would have um, over six, 63 or more parking spaces on the site. Okay. I think we have around 65 spaces if you count the exterior parking as well. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Mitchell? George. Yeah, Mitch uh, or Mr. Walsh is. Uh, is all the financing in place for this project if it's a go? Yep. Everything is all committed and so. Yep. Right. Thank We're you. working on getting a few bids right now and getting it ready to roll. So. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions for him at all? Yeah. Question, but I don't know if it's for Carlos or or you, Mitch. Um, 
Um, at one point, you were talking about expanding the footprint of the building really pretty much out to the perimeter of the possible easements. Is that true? And is that is that what we're doing if we take 63 units or is that where did that come from? The only reason I brought that up is because if you're going to meet that 40 foot height requirement, right. um, you would have to expand the footprint of the building beyond what is currently proposed into to potentially get that amount of units. Um, and so that's why I wanted to um, comment on that, because there is room to be able to expand the footprint of the building. Um, but as was mentioned before, that means less accurate parking, less green space on the lot. So that would be uh, that would be it, um, widening the footprint um, to make more living space, but keeping the 40 foot height. Is that it? Essentially the same amount of units or up to that amount of units, mm -hmm. um, but just increasing the footprint of the building. So a bigger building overall. Thank you. Any other questions at all? No. Does anybody else from the public wish to speak on this matter? Thanks, Mitch. Yep. And I think I've asked at least three times now. I'll ask one more time just in case. Does anybody else from the public wish to speak? During the public hearing regarding the appeal of a decision of the Board of Adjustment, Whitewater Properties, LLC, Mitchell Walsh. Hearing none, I will close the public hearing. Any discussion? Okie doke. Um, well, in looking at this, I'm, I mean, I'm looking at this from, from these standpoints. One, um, I think this is a unique spot. I went over and looked at the property and it, obviously the idea of the mixed use transition from downtown quarter to, to residential neighborhoods, I think is a great idea. However, as Carlos you know, mentioned, this doesn't really fit that. There is no residential housing near there. Um, I used to live two blocks from there and we used to walk a dog down there and it's, <laughs> there's not a lot of folks down there. But I think this, this area holds a, t a tremendous amount of potential for the city of Winona in developing housing in the future because it's one of the areas going west from this west of Benchmark because this is sandwiched in between Daniels Hardware and Benchmark. But west of Benchmark all the way to the um, – to the malting operation, you have some of the little, I mean, you have some of the few vacant acres in Winona that I don't know if anybody has plans for it. In my understanding, it's privately held and not held by the Port Authority, but you have potential to start something here that may blossom into something more as far as housing. Um, so I think that's a good thing. Um, and to get things started, I think, you know, I'm, I'm open to some variances, especially when we've already passed something or this the city council already passed something that was 53 feet so to add three feet to something that was already passed once i don't see as a big change or a big lift and i also think it's better to go up than to go out um, i think you need to maintain green space i think it's a tight land package as it is i mean in a perfect world you'd redesign something on that corner that incorporated daniels underneath it and all of that but you know that that's just you know, that's just my fantasy, but that's not going to happen. The reality that we have in front of us is to do we grant something at 56 feet when we had granted it at 53 feet previously? Is there a reason to not to say no to three feet additional? Mm -hmm. And I'm not seeing it. I'm not hearing it. Um, I, from the comments that were in the packet at the time, there were three public comments. Two talked about procedure, one was in support. The comments that Carlos delivered to us at the beginning of the additional comments that just came in were an additional 15 comments in support. So that means what we've seen from the public on this is 16 in support, two with questions about procedure, and none that have said don't do this. So all of those things in my mind point towards accepting alternative C. And I say that with a degree of, I guess, let me, uh, I say that with not with a degree of reluctance, but I really want to emphasize that I put a lot of faith in the work that people do before us and the other committees. I don't override something from another committee lightly. I think it's very important what those people do, and I appreciate their time and efforts into it. 
Um, but I think in this case, rare as it is, it's warranted. So that's my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. George. Uh, just for a point of order, uh, Mr. Attorney, before we discuss this as a council, do we need a motion first? You don't necessarily need a motion at this point. I, I think it's appropriate for the council to deliberate uh, okay. and then and then have a motion. But again, you know, it's up to you, I guess, when somebody wants to make a motion. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Uh, just a few points on this project. Uh, I did support the project uh, the first time it came up. Uh, I voted for it. I voted to overrule the Board of Adjustment. Uh, ever since this project has began, it's been coming for variances and it's been coming for extensions and another variance again. Uh, the developers put a lot of time in this or volunteer board of adjustment, which is very, very good building people on where they understand all these. Uh, tonight, <clears throat> I am going to vote in with the board of adjustment on this project tonight. I just think it's uh, right now, I think it's the right thing to do. I asked a question about finances. The reason I brought that up is we've had Two developments, one went way up west by the Dairy Queen. Uh, that one, for some odd reason, ran out of gas. Uh, we had the one right down on Washington Street. A gentleman, I think, out of La Crescent came and rescued that project. And I you know, really want to make sure that all that is in place. But tonight, I am going to be voting uh, to affirm the Board of Adjustments uh, ruling on this project. Thank you, George. Steve. This is a great example of good people coming to have with the same set of facts coming to different conclusions. And uh, uh, boy, you, you, you read through this. I, I read through what our, our friends at the Board of Adjustments have concluded. I read through uh, uh, comments. I read through the the uh, the six steps, the six criteria that that staff put together. I believe Carlos sent that to us in, a, in an April 11th memo that, that takes a uh, uh, an opposite view of things. And I, I, I hear my uh, my my friend, uh, Mr. Hyma, that I, I respect his his comments and uh, those same comments about about density in that area. Um, I, I would look at differently where if we're going to if we're going to bring a, a rather dense, densely populated uh, uh, building there to a, a relatively small area, and and then maybe have more buildings there with with uh, more residential uh, uh, structures of of multiple stories. I'm not sure that that area is going to support that density primarily because of parking. Um, I, there's there's on street uh, uh, parking that's used almost every day. I I I, I see that now, and um, I read through the uh, criteria of board of adjustments point after point I'm identifying with that it it doesn't meet the the, the criteria that are set out and so um, uh, I'm I'm going to join my my colleague Mr. Borzakowski in sustaining uh, the findings of the board of adjustment. Thanks Steve. Thank you. Uh, Jerome and then I'll get here. I've lived uh, in that area for the past almost uh, 35 years, over 35 years. And um, that corner is far from residential. And I'm looking at the riverfront and the way it looks. One of the, we're talking about height. What we should be looking here, the only thing question on this variance is whether or not the height of the building is in question. Now, if you go down to the west is Freighter, and that sticks up far above the neighborhood. West of that, you have the, uh, the loading facilities for the barge, barge. Go directly to the east, we have two tall bridges. Then there's Fastenal Building. Then there's the uh, condominium complex. The riverfront is definitely populated with vertical structures. And again, we're looking at looking at height as being the legal question here. 
in terms of this variance. And along that riverfront, that height would uh, would would look and fit in quite well. Um, the idea of just mashing the building down um, makes no sense whatsoever. If the variance, if the existing zoning would allow that number of residential units to be in place without a variance on that property, then there's no cause for denying it based on density. The density question is moot. Uh, the only question we have to look at here, as far as I can see, is whether or not this is going to be sticking up like a sore thumb. And it really isn't. It's going to fit in quite nicely. And I would differ, I guess, with it, with Steve's view. It's going to open, potentially open the way for developing that uh, riverfront to the west um, to multi-story residential development. And one of the, I don't think that there are a dozen people in town that would say, would argue that we have too much housing and too much quality housing in the city. And to deny something here would be, I think, just the wrong thing to do. Thank you, Jerome. Uh, take Aaron and then Pam. Um, thank you, Mayor. And and I agree with uh, Councilman Christensen. Um, you know, I'm in, I'm in support of this. You know, it is going to be subject to a site plan approval, parking, fire, pedestrians, and all of that. Um, we did it back in 2020. We discussed it. We discussed it to go three feet higher. I agree with Jerome's assessment perfectly. This this really isn't about density. And as he mentioned about, um, we need more housing. That that's a perfect point for it, and it's great for the tax base. Um, so I will be supporting um, what I will call alternative three. Okay. Thank you, Pam. Well, I I feel that the the city obviously needs more housing, and environmentally, it's a good thing to put more people on a smaller footprint than it is to spread everybody out. And so that's one of my that's one of my criteria. Also, it makes better use of city services if we have a smaller footprint and the same city services of of plumbing and and sewer. And besides that, if that really is a prime place for Winona, it's prime riverfront. It it's a beautiful spot. In any other city, I think it might have been developed a long time ago. And I more concerned would be more concerned about green space and the looks of the building. So whether it's three feet taller or not doesn't bother me. But the design standards are where I will I will really be quite interested to see that we do well with that space. Yeah. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we go with alternative three and override the decision of the board of adjustments and thereby grant the variance. I oh. second. Anyway, we have a motion from Aaron, second from Jerome. Uh, I'll throw my two cents in. Um, one of the things I want to do as mayor is be consistent. And I think it's important that um, I think five members of this council uh, approved or uh, overturned the decision of the uh, Board of Appeals twice. Um, you know, once for the 53 and then once for the extension. Um, and now we're looking at three feet higher. Um, this one was difficult for me. I, I looked at it uh, from all angles. Um, you know, I guess it meets criteria of parking. It meets criteria of density. The council has passed a 53 foot variance in the past. An extra three feet to me is not a reason to deny it. Um, you know, the 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 parking and the density, if those meet code, and those would be bigger concerns of mine if those were not being met. Well, you know, because then we are going to have cars flowing out into other areas, parking everywhere, and maybe that will still be the case. Um, but I I have this grand vision for Winona where. 
maybe people will ride bikes a little bit more often. Maybe people will walk a little bit more often. Um, and if they don't have that parking stall available to them, maybe they'll make the decision to buy a bicycle or walk to the downtown area or where they need to go. Um, you know, again, a fantasy, <laughs> but, but something I would love to see, I think our town is ripe for it. And, uh, as long as parking is met, density is met, we're, I already voted on 53 feet twice, an extra three feet, six inches to me. I'm going to be standing looking up at it. I won't be able to see that three feet, six inches. And that is not a reason to deny it in my own mind. So I, I appreciate all the discussion tonight. I think they were all valid points by everybody. Uh, we do have a motion on the table. Why don't we go for a vote? All those in favor of overruling the Board of Adjustments findings say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. You got everybody on that one? Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Motion passes. For the remainder of this meeting, residents are only allowed to speak if they have a request before the council, and I have recognized you to speak. Under the petitions, requests, and communications, item 3.1 is the 2023 Steamboat Days Agreement, and President Jeremy Graves is here to present. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Thanks for having us here. Um, we got, we're, our 75th year was our best year ever. Um, it was a great year uh, for for weather first um, and all the different events that we had and we're really uh, happy with everything that you know transpired over that year and really proud to celebrate Winona uh, on that 75th year. So we're looking forward to 76. Um, we're making some partnerships in town and working with some businesses and we're looking to bring in more family friendly events. Uh, we will be having a circus come this year and uh, be uh, working with and around the carnival area. Our car show will look a little bit different. Uh, Jim Remlinger has stepped back and it won't be quite as grand, but it's going to be there. And you can tell people in Winona we will have a car show. Um, we're hoping to grow that and make it as big and as great as what Jim uh, was able to produce over the years. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to, to continuing that tradition here in Winona. Um, we're also bringing in a, a family comedy troupe um, and uh, they're gonna be uh, in various places, but uh, it's a, a father, bro, uh, father, son, and bro, brother, uncle combination. Um, they do different things that um, play to uh, the crowd, uh, they bring their own, uh, they, they juggle, they climb on ladders and um, all family friendly stuff and put in a little bit of comedy and we're looking forward to see that happen. And uh, But we got some pretty big acts coming in uh, to Winona as well. We will have Miss America back again uh, for our Miss Winona Steamboat Days um, pageant that will be happening that Saturday and she'll be down at the car show autographing. Um, we'll have Miss Wisconsin, Miss Minnesota as well. And um, uh, of course, as you know, uh, Rachel Evangelisco uh, is the current Miss uh, Minnesota. She'll be back, it was our former Miss Winona. So we're happy to have her back uh, as well. Um, we're also looking to uh, have our fireworks, uh, hopefully shot off at the river. Uh, we're, you guys had a little bit of talk tonight. You know, I would say that I'm not uh, a little worried. You know, hopefully we can uh, make sure that water gets down and uh, we're gonna be able to have that down there. We do have a backup plan for that. Um, and then obviously our, our grand parade, uh, Fred Benning has been chairing our parade for 23, 24 years, Fred, right? And um, this might, maybe, potentially might be his last parade that he's chairing and bringing in, we'll see. Uh, but we're very excited for uh, all the various bands and stuff that are, that are gonna be coming in along with having Miss America um, be there and chairing the parade, so. Awesome. Sounds great. Thank you, Jeremy. Anybody have any questions of Jeremy? No. Uh, Mayor and Council, I just want to note we did distribute an updated uh, license agreement. There was a, a few language changes from the city attorney. Scott. Steve. Hey, I want to thank you for uh, uh, maintaining the car show. I know that's tough when, you, when you've got wonderful people like the Remlingers that are, are maybe finally transitioning. So thank you for putting in that effort. It's, it's, it's well-loved and well-attended. 
So. Yeah, we have uh, some great support from Dahl Automotive and uh, uh, Fred. I just talked about being uh, the chair of the parade. He kind of took that upon uh, himself to to hold it yeah. steady with something. We heard from the public. Uh, it was out there, and we, they really wanted to make sure. I heard personally from multiple businesses in town that wanted to make sure we ha still had it, and uh, proud to say that we will. Well done. Thanks. Steve, uh, can we move the council adapt the resolution? Second. We have a motion from Steve, a second from George. Mayor, I'll be abstaining on this vote. Okay. Any discussion? George. Did I hear you, Jeremy, say that Fred may be retiring? He's not that old yet. I don't think he used that word exactly, though. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I did not. Uh, oh, okay. I think Fred, as long as he's around, I think Fred will be in, uh, involved with us and, and supporting us and helping us in whatever way he can. So he stepped up big this year and uh, really helped lead the way with the car show or the taking over of that. So okay. appreciate that a lot. There you Thank go. you. Thanks. Thanks for Thank all you folks. Any other comments, questions, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Yep. Thank you all. Thanks everybody for coming. Item 3.2, the request for licenses for the 2023 Steamboat Days Festival. And this is for the temporary on sale license and the carnival license. With the council approve the licenses. Second. A motion from Steve, a second from Pam. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 3.3 .3 is the craft beer tour agreement with Layton Enterprises. We do we'll move to approve the license agreement and authorize administration to execute the same with second. In order. Motion from George, second from Steve. We do have Pam Simon from Layton here, if anyone has questions for her. I could have worn my purple shirt and been with the Alzheimer's people too. So. Yeah. <laughs> Pam, tell us about your event. The Winona Craft Beer Tour, I believe this is our seventh annual. Layton has been doing them for several years at all of our locations. We have 25 stations, um, mostly in Northern Minnesota and on South Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, Winona Craft Beer Tour will be the last Saturday of June. Uh, we have, I'm not sure exactly now, at least 50 and up to 80 different um, distributors there with different things to taste, including seltzers, craft beers, and ciders, hard ciders. Um, it's a lot of fun. We incorporate a lot of games into the activity and event. It's along the um, in Levy Park, which is a perfect place. It's got grass and greenery and places to relax. Um, and afterwards, I've noticed a lot of people as they leave the craft beer tour, unless it's pouring rain like it has twice, um, they migrate into downtown for dinner and to continue to socialize with their friends. And I've seen them even a big, huge group with their craft beer tour t-shirts hanging on out at Nate and Alley's. So yeah. it brings a lot of people to Winona and it's a good thing for people in Winona. We expect at least 150 people there. We can accommodate more. Thank you. 150, 750. Ooh, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least 150 better show up now. Yeah. Uh, at least 750. Uh, great. Thank you. Excellent. Any other questions for Pam at all? No? Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. And did we get a motion? Yes. Already? Okay. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 3.4 is a request for temporary wine and beer license for the craft beer tour. Move to approve the uh, license. Second. second. We have a motion from George. I'll take the second from Pam. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 3.5 is a request to hold the parade by Lake Winona Manor. Move the council approve the request. Second. We have a motion from George. I'm sorry, motion from Steve, a second from George. Any discussion? Go ahead, George. That is a very nice parade. Yep, I participated in it last year, and uh, nice. I, I think it's great for the residents over there. Absolutely. Any other comments, questions, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed? Motion passes. Item 3.6 is a request for the Main Street Program Parade of Trucks on May 20th. 
Move the council through the request. Second that. We have a motion from Steve, a second from Pam. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 3.7 is a street closure request for the 2023 Main Street Community Events. Would the council approve the request? Second. We have a motion from Steve, a second from Aaron. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And item 3.8 is the Anthem Skate Park Report. Would the council receive and file the report? Uh, we have oh, Mr. Zach no Craig here to okay. make the report. Okay. So we have a motion, no second yet, just for that, okay? All right, help me remember that. Hey, Zach. Hey, how are you? Good. Oh, thank you. All right, so this is our um, yearly report. Um, we've been giving these since we've opened in 2017. Um, and then just a, a brief rundown, we opened, I'm sorry, 2015. Holy cow, it has been, it's been a while. Uh, we opened two and a half years after the free skate park um, in Winona um, was removed by the city. Um, and since then we have, I can start with our, our sales. We also, we manage the city skate park and we also run a, um, a skate shop um, in the same building of the, the former West Rec. Um, um, from last year, uh, we've grown our sales from $53,191 to $56,433. Um, our activity report, the um, skate park continues to be popular and attendance continues um, to grow. Um, we took a pretty big dip um, during COVID because um, we were forced to shut down. But now um, that we're out of that, our numbers during COVID, um, 475 entries, and now in, um, as of last year, um, 1,862 um, daily entries. And just to put that into context, that's mostly happening, happening in about um, eight months of the year. Since we're an indoor um, skate park, uh, we really, we slow down naturally um, in the warmer weather, especially since there are um, free skate parks in La Crosse and Rochester. The skate parks, ten skateboarders tend to travel for the, the free option. Um, and uh, we also had 270, 207 new waiver signs. So in that time, 207 um, new participants. Uh, another activity update, uh, we held our first event since COVID, um, uh, the annual Christmas Cup competition. It was a huge success, um, brought in skaters from Winona, Rochester, Austin, La Crosse, Wisconsin, and Mason City, Iowa. Um, let's see, are we ready? Is it just this? Ah, yeah. Uh, we created Girls' Night on June 21st of 2022. Uh, it's a monthly session open only to girl skaters and led entirely by female instructors. It's been a very positive experience, and we look forward um, to seeing these young skaters continue to improve. I'd say of everything I'm going to talk about, this is the thing that I'm most proud of because I had absolutely nothing to do with it. <laughs> because it, it or, organically happened, it was brought, uh, it was requested by... Um, one of our female employees who skated, who skates, um, brought in some other female instructors. They planned the whole thing. There's a rule that there are are no men allowed. I've never seen it happen. I only see pictures and reports, and it's completely run um, independent of me. And our job is to provide the facility, and uh, yeah, it continues to grow, and it's it's fantastic. Um, we also created the the grumpy old jam. Don't have a lot of pictures here, but it is uh, it's um, a biweekly skate session for skateboarders over 30. Uh, this was organized by skateboarders from Winona and La Crosse as a fundraiser for the Skate Plaza project. And so far, um, the the events have raised over a thousand dollars for that project. Um, future plans. Um, we plan on implementing a digital waiver system this year um, that's going to improve the check-in process and streamline data collection for us to um, for these reports to the city. Up to this point, we're still a, a um, on paper, and we we hope to continue uh, fundraising for a new outdoor skate park that will be um, free to the public. With the growing popularity of skateboarding, Winona, we hope to be a part. Um, 
in bringing a free option to the skaters of Winona. Um, here is a picture as well. We participated um, in Skate Park Advocacy Day. Um, the project that's, uh, we plan on updating the city more with this um, with this project. There's some new um, council members and it's been um, a while since we've, we've updated the council, but um, this project, the Winona Skate Plaza is one of 39 projects in the state of Minnesota that's recognized by um, the city of Skate. Um, the co-author um, of the skate park grant bill, which um, is before the Senate right now and will be voted on by the end of this legislative session on the 22nd of May, um, has the potential to bring up to $500,000 in matching funds to Winona. And like I said, we're one of 39 projects that is um, currently has the designs and um, city support and is lacking the funding. So this could be really huge for us and we could be talking to you in the near future. Separate from, from Anthem, I'm a member of that, that fundraising committee, but a lot of that happens naturally at Anthem because it's, it's Winona's um, skate park. Oh, and then just, this is just, I got to show this and have it be public. This is my my son, Julian, who is a skateboarder who came with me to uh, Skate Park Advocacy Day. Um, he met with um, Jeremy Miller. We spoke to Jeremy Miller about the project, and this is him with um, professional skateboarder Jack Olson, who is from uh, the Minneapolis area, who spoke at the event, and pretty proud of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then just some other highlights we've had. Um, no major injuries. Shoplifting is not an issue. Um, and unlike the, the um, previous uh, skate park, uh, we've had no major incidents requiring intervention from staff or law enforcement. It continues to be a safe environment where community members can come together over their shared interest of um, not only skateboarding, but um, BMX, rollerblading, roller skating, um, scootering. And finally, working with the city has continued to be a positive experience, and we look forward to continuing that. Um, I do have one more thing just to end on something wholesome uh, before you press play this. Just for context, this is a young skater doing her first drop in. And if you've ever skateboarded, you know that dropping in is one of the hardest things you can do and one of the biggest milestones in skateboarding. And this um, Ridgeway Community School um, used the skate park for uh, a field trip. And I just think this is wholesome and fun to share. So you can press play. <laughs> thanks thanks Zach. yeah no problem steve thanks so much for providing a, a safe excellent wholesome place for for our kids to recreate uh, i'm impressed with your financials as well i mean even through covid you're 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 building so thank you well done i appreciate it thank you jeff and i just want to say thank you also zach had invited me to come over and tour the facility and which i took him up on that and uh was impressed by impressed by what he's doing and and look forward to the other plans. I think one thing to note, um, you know, Winona is is one of the few cities that that has an indoor skate park but does not have an outdoor free skate park. So I think the plans, I, I think for his, all the good work that has been done, I think it's really important that we don't get complacent um, because there is a a need. I mean, even Wabasha has a free outdoor skate park. Um, so I think that's something that, you know, we need in addition to no all of the good things that are going on here. Right. And so, you know, not, not trying to, <laughs> not, not trying to take shots at Wabasha, just comparing sizes right. of the yeah. community. Absolutely. That's all. Mm -hmm. So, but thank you. So thank you, Zach. Thanks, Jeff. Pam. Yes. Yes. I had the opportunity to uh, be over at the skate park as an election judge mm. last week. And I would We'll be talking to the city about improving some of the facilities there, specifically the doorways yes. and the and the drinking fountain. Yes, we've got we've got some things to do over there. I, I agree. 
but it's but it's obviously well loved and well used. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Pam. Any other comments? No. Thanks, Zach. Appreciate yeah. it. Good job. All right, thanks. Okay, I need a second. <laughs> All right, we have a motion from Steve, a second from Aaron. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. <clears throat> Motion passes. Under new finished business, unfinished business, item 4.1 is the award the contract for the 2023 bituminous mill and overlay project. Will the council adopt the resolution? Second. Motion from Steve, a second from George. Any discussion? Jeff? Is it in the packet what's being done? <laughs> or can, I mean, you don't need to go street by street, but just ballpark. No. I, I apologize. There was supposed to be a map in there, and I, I it, it wasn't put in there. Oh, okay. uh, basically, it's service drive by McDonald's area and by Sour Home. So the okay. service drives are going to be done basically from where the roundabout project, the the mini roundabout project, ended to Kramer Drive on the north side, and from Sour Home area to Sunset Drive. Yeah, we didn't do it for you. Yeah. I apologize. The no, map was supposed to be in there and that, that was missed. That's on okay. me. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Jeff. Any other? Yeah, George. I was surprised to see only one bidder. <laughs> <laughs> you. Any other comments, questions, discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Under new business, item 5.1, it's a professional services contract with TKDA for the Winona Municipal Airport Engineering Services. With the council authorized administration to execute the contract. Second. We have a motion from Steve, a second from George. Any discussion? What this is? Brian, could you just give us a summary quick? Sorry. You didn't read the 400 page contract? <laughs> it's about 380. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I get that. Um, every five years, we're required by the FAA to appoint a engineer for the airport. Okay. Um, TKDA is currently our, our engineer, and we've been very pleased with them. Uh, so we solicited quotes from other engineers other engineering firms and to be candid they called me and said are we satisfied with tkda and i was said yes and we only got tkda to submit but they are kind of known for being the airport engineers for a lot of municipalities they do a good job perfect thank you so much yep. Frank, thank you, Frank. i'm sorry yeah. go ahead please can i ask where they're out of uh they're actually a nationwide firm oh uh the the office that services us is out of Minneapolis. So if we need something that they're typically doing it remotely or they're traveling they, here or uh, they have traveled down here several times. Obviously, if they're doing a project, they're here. Um, many of my meetings with them are phone or, or OK. All right. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Brian? No, thanks, Brian. Any other comments, questions or discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 5.2 is the Winona Airport Entitlement Transfer. Move that the council adopt the resolution. Second. Motion from Steve, second from George. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. 5.3 is the Northern States Power Company permanent easement for the Mississippi Riverfront Trail. With the council approve the easement and authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute the agreement. Second. Motion from Steve, second from Jerome. Any discussion? Um, how, how, how close does this, uh, how many more easements do we have to uh, get to before the trail can happen? Uh, Mayor and members of council, uh, two more for the first phase of the project are are needed. Uh, it does take quite a bit of time to negotiate them because there are a lot of requirements that have to be included in the easements. So. 
it's good news that we got this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Lucy. Thanks, Jerome. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 7.1 is council concerns. We'll start with Council Member Borzikowski. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would just like to thank uh, Mike Dernan, uh, the park maintenance crew this uh, past weekend. I know I had calls on it, Chad and the mayor had calls on it about the debris that was left over on Latch Island. Now I know in my years, this is the first time I seen such a mess. If aluminum cans would have been 60 cents a pound, I would have picked them up. I would have said, no, I'll clean it up. I'll just take the cans. But, you know, I guess, you know, just a warning to the people over there. You know, if you go over there, clean up your mess. And now with the high water coming, you know, if they would not have picked that up, all that trash would have been down probably into La Crosse already. So uh, just, you know, enjoy it but please clean it up. And thank you to the crew that was over there. I know Jim McMartin was there and, and other people were there. So uh, they, I think they loaded that Packer truck. So thank you. Thanks, George. They, I will agree they did a great job cleaning that up. Thanks, Chad. Council Member Item. I uh, told you before that I was able to be a, an election judge over last week over at the over at the Anthem Skate Park and East otherwise known as East End Rec and I wanted just wanted to say that I was proud of the number of voters that turned out it was a steady stream of people and I felt proud of my town that on an off off election year that people would would turn out in those numbers uh, but as as George just mentioned, I was not so proud to hear about the big the big bash over on Latch Island, the huge bonfire, lots of trash thrown around, uh, working toward the destruction it would, of a beautiful park, and it should not be used that way. If city staff hadn't shown up to clean it up, and if we hadn't had snow there would be just all kinds of dangerous garbage left all over the beach. And that's not the way it should be. So I'm not, not proud of that at all. And I'd like to thank city staff for showing up and cleaning it up. That's all. Okay. Thanks, Pam. Council Member Young. Thank you. A second daily train is coming closer to becoming a reality, uh, going between Chicago uh, and St. Paul. Uh, um, Current challenge that we, we feel we're going to be able to solve by this fall, we think service could start as soon as this fall, is actually finding rolling stock. Uh, there's, a, there's a shortage of, of uh, actual rolling stock, uh, which uh, a shortage of uh, awful lot of things. Um, yet once that is located, they're, they're feeling that, that sh they should be able to have uh, cars refurbished and rolling as early as this fall. I saw a, a recently revised schedule that is much more favorable to us. This is traveling during daylight hours. I, I apologize. I, I it just didn't get along in this packet. I'll try to bring it for uh, for next meeting. Share it with you. It's really a cool schedule that you could potentially. Uh, uh, let's see the departure from from Winona. I believe it was 12:45, arriving in the Twin Cities two hours later. Uh, um, and I, I can I'll, I'll bring that schedule at some point. But it was uh, a more favorable schedule than had been proposed. Uh, um, a couple months ago. So you really could use that to get up to the Twin Cities, get to uh, an evening ball game, for example, and then get back uh, the next day to Winona. So it's coming. I have, I have a question for Steve. Please. Do you think that uh, that this change had anything to do with the public meeting that happened uh, a few months ago? There were many people commenting on the on the schedule I just I, I don't have a way to know that engage that I, I know that that a lot of that public comment was 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 negative on that original schedule. It was a really right. disad, disadvantageous okay. schedule and it's it's just much improved. Um, maybe one more one more thing related. Uh, um, we we've got an informal group in Winona that's that's working to uh, uh, raise awareness, f figure out and facilitate ridership. 
uh, uh, the on and off uh, at the station, what public transportation could look like, including bicycles. Uh, um, I raised scooters, and I got some eye rolls when, when I said that, uh, uh, um, from, the, uh, from the depot uh, around town. So um, we're, we're, we're planning for it and, and obviously wanting to promote it. So thank you. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Council Member Rupinski. Uh, nothing tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Council Member Hyman. Uh, nothing this evening. Thank you. Council Member Christensen. Uh, yes, two things. First uh, and foremost, I'd like to acknowledge and um, express my deep appreciation to the uh, Winona Police Department, uh, Sheriff's Office, and all of our emergency responders and personnel, and the over 1,200 citizens who have joined in in looking for uh, Maddie Kingsbury and trying to uh, uh, resolve that uh, tragic disappearance. I think that uh, it's uh, something that uh, we as a community can be proud of, um, that effort. And second, on a little bit happier note, um, I'd like to uh, invite everyone to um, our own uh, John Howard's film debut uh, this weekend, uh, Friday night at the Winona Arts Center, 7 o'clock. Uh, the uh, locally produced by <clears throat> a woman I know quite well, my wife, Mary Farrell, and uh, Blake Darst, uh, Healthy Lake Winona, chronicling the efforts to uh, bring our, uh, our lake up to, up to standard and uh, all, the, uh, all the things that have, have been done and are being done. And uh, invite everyone to, uh, to come to that as part of celebration of Earth Day. Thanks, Ruben. Moving on to the consent agenda, there are six items. The approval of the minutes from April 3rd, the final adoption of an ordinance to remove a 10 minute parking stall on uh, West or East 3rd Street, the adoption of an ordinance to amend the chapter on temporary on sale licenses, approve the summary publication for that ordinance, an ordinance to amend the chapter for shared transportation systems or motorized scooters, and the summary publication for that ordinance. Move that the council approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion from Steve, a second from George. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Mayor being 7.52 p.m., I move we adjourn. Second. Motion from George, second from Steve. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Meetings adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, the script. Uh, we adjourn and then we go into yeah. the other meeting. We just walk yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. Because it's a separate meeting. I don't have to anything. No, okay. when we go in there, you know. That's what I'm getting at. I was like, all right. Okay. <laughs>